the Honorable Prime Minister, the leader of the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party, put your hands together. Labour Massive, are you ready? Ready. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it gives us great pleasure to introduce the re-elected Prime Minister coming back at you Put after the 25th together. with the entire Labour team. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Denzel, Denzel Douglas! Douglas. Promises. This is the principle on which our manifesto was formulated for the 2010 elections. In moving forward, we are not starting from scratch. We dare not start from the beginning. We have a proud record, a record of progress on which to build our future. It was we who initiated a program of progressive change in 1995 that has revolutionized the economy of St. Kitts and Nevis, and we have pushed our small twin island federation to the forefront of social and economic development in the entire Caribbean region. Hence, we are now continuing on that path of progressive change, good progressive change, good progressive change and not change for the sake of change say constructive progressive change not destructive change that Pam wants to bring to St. Kitts and Nevis progressive change that you can embrace as a people a proud people of St. Kitts and Nevis progressive change that has taken so many of our people from a condition of poverty and landlessness to now a proud position of strength through empowerment, education, and wealth creation. Progressive change that over the next five years will complete the transformation of our economy into a full-fledged competitive service economy that will bring even more wealth and opportunity for all of our people. In our manifesto of change, progressive change, 
we have taken time out to outline our progress as a nation because we do intend to build on our progress over the last 14 years and now accelerate the pace of development here in St. Kitts and Nevis. We know the international environment is very turbulent, so we will proceed very, very cautiously. Everything that we do, comrades, everything that we do, my fellow citizens, we do so in the next five years, will be based on a detailed and comprehensive analysis that ensures that we do not sacrifice our many achievements as we strive to grasp new opportunities for all of our people. We do not have to look far to see the very many risks that countries face in this hostile environment. In one country, it is only when public servants get their paychecks that they realize the amount is reduced because their government did not have the money to pay the full wage bill for that month. In other countries in the Caribbean, government workers are being paid many, many weeks after payday, while the bank and other creditors pile on the pressure on these workers to get them to, their, to pay their own mortgages and other loans on time. But at the same time, my comrades, in some of these same countries, the private enterprises have laid off many, many hundreds of workers. And the financial sector have stood shakily on a very precipice as financial institutions struggle to get liquidity required to honor their own obligations to their own depositors. That has not happened here. That has not happened in St. Kitts and Nevis because we have planned very, very well and we have been extra, extra careful as a government. I want to make the point further that the double salary that we paid in December, it shocked many onlookers because it was based on very careful analysis, very careful projections that definitively demonstrated the entire strength and capacity of our own economy. One thing that has become clear in this crisis is that with a few exceptions, the countries that change leadership in the midst of the crisis are the countries that are now encountering very many severe economic difficulties. In this crisis, there is, I warn, no room for indecisiveness and policy mistakes as new leaders try to learn the job. In government, you cannot learn properly on the job. You must have some experience and some maturity. The penalty for such indecision and mistakes is financial and economic collapse accompanied by social mayhem. The people of Dominica, they fully understand this and they therefore provided the Labour administration of Prime Minister Roosevelt's carrot. They provided him a resounding mandate to lead Dominica through the global turbulence that we face in the Caribbean region. 